Hello and welcome to the Hub. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. It is mission success for China as spacecraft Shenzhou 13 brought back three Chinese taikonauts home Saturday morning after spending six months at the Chinese space station. All three, mission commander Zhai Zhigang, Wang Yaping, the first Chinese woman to do a spacewalk, and Ye Guangfu are all in good shape. This is a national record for the longest stay in space. The previous crew spent three months in orbit. What are the achievements of this mission, and what's next for China's space program? For more on this, we have with us today Mr. Xu Yansong, Director General of the Asia-Pacific Space Cooperation Organization in Beijing. Mr. Xu, welcome back to the Hub. First of all, um, tell us, what are the emotions when you saw the three Chinese astronauts coming out of the module? Uh, well, I think uh, there's a, a crowd of uh, excitement of, uh, uh, of the whole nation. People uh, uh, look into these images that uh, the astronauts came out of the capsule, uh, um, waving to the crowds. And there was also an immediate interview. I saw the whole process this morning at CGTN. It was very exciting. And it was, uh, it was a, a complete successful story for the uh, mission to, to be accomplished in such a fashion of a, a splashdown, what we call it, the landing process was uh, more than perfect. Uh, it, it, all the timings, all the sequence was successful. And also this was uh, the first time they are attempting the fast landing process, uh, which take five orbit uh, from the, the, from the, ca the uh, capsule of Shenzhou 13. So uh, in comparison with the 20 plus hours of landing of the Shenzhou 12, this is a, a very good and successful landing because this uh, fast landing requires a very precise control of the spacecraft, in, in particular the uh, attack angle that the uh, capsule can enter the atmosphere. So it was a very successful mission, a very exciting uh, atmosphere in, uh, in, in, of the whole nation. You know, Mr. Xu, the three astronauts looked in better shape than I personally thought they would be, right? After spending six months in space, uh, when they were interviewed by the, new, the news media, uh, they were pretty much in good shape, talking to the news media, you know, uh, interacting, uh, smiling at the cameras. Uh, how come after six months, they're still in really amazing shape, allow me to say? Well, uh, you see from the, uh, the, the whole process, they were uh, dragged out of the capsule and it was carried on the chair. So after six months, they were experiencing a lot of uh, bone mass loss as well as muscle loss, and their cardio, cardiovascular system also needs to be uh, uh, repaired. So uh, after six months of, uh, of microgravity environment, in fact, they're, they're, quite, uh, uh, they're quite not used to the gravity, and this is the first time they experienced the gravity uh, this morning. So, um, even, But you don't see them they, catching, they see catching their breath shape. or anything, right, during uh, talking to the news media? Yes, they were they were very uh, they were uh, very uh, uh, in, in very much in good condition because we see the astronauts are are, are conducting trainings and exercise every day. Uh, people are saying that they have exercise every uh, every day two hours uh, of exercise, including including the treadmills and, and elastic band to resist it uh, to to maintain their muscle mass and and, and bone mass. You know, I'm really curious about this. What is it like to return from space after six months? I mean, after living in almost zero gravity for six months, what are the challenges of the three Chinese astronauts returning home? And how do they really handle uh, the differences? Well, I think uh, you, would, you, you can imagine yourself submerged in water uh, for, uh, for an extended period of time. And when you walk out of the swimming pool, uh, you would feel very heavy of, of your body. So the returning process uh, of the capsule uh, uh, takes about uh, two hours, uh, and the, the returning, uh, in, in particular after the microgravity environment, there is a blackout uh, from 100 kilometers all the way to 60 kilometers altitude. And after the blackout, there is a deployment of par parachute. And that deployment of parachute, the astronauts really can feel it because the, the, uh, there is an immediate drag of uh, about two or three Gs to the astronaut's body so that they feel the gravity for the first time in six months. And then after that, there was a landing process that would be relatively smooth. And then there was a retro uh, engine that fires at two meters altitude So uh, before the landing. So the whole thing is a, quite a ride, quite exciting ride for the astronauts. 
in particular after six months of microgravity environment. So that is more or less a challenging and it's the first time in six months they experience gravity. Let's talk about this blackout zone that seems to be straight out of a science fiction. The blackout zone that Taikonauts have to pass through while returning to the Earth. Uh, what is this black zone? And especially since the Taikonauts lose contact with the ground crew while passing through this blackout zone, how dangerous could this all be? Well, let's say that the landing process uh, has uh, about three or four stages. The first stage is the separation of the return capsule along with the service module uh, from the station itself. So that's 400 kilometers altitude. So they have to then, using the five orbits, to descend from 400 kilometers uh, altitude to 145 kilometers altitude. And then there's a separation of the, uh, of the service module. Uh, and then the, uh, the, the capsule uh, will start uh, entering the Earth using atmosphere as a drag and to slow it down. So there's a fri strong friction of the capsule uh, with the atmosphere, and that creates plasma and many other factors. So these plasma it re prevent the communication signals from, uh, from getting into or out of the capsule itself. So that's about four to six minutes of blackouts, depending on the angle of the attack. So that's a, a strong friction and using the atmosphere to slow the capsule down from the astronomic uh, speed of seven kilometers per second all the way to three, uh, three or 200 meters per second before the parachute deployed. So that's the blackout period. This is truly phenomenal and thank you all. Thank you so much for explaining all this to our audience. We know that Wang Yaping became the first Chinese woman to live in the Chinese space station. She's also the first Chinese woman to actually spacewalk. Are there additional challenges for women, taikonauts, or astronauts staying in space? Well, Wang Yaping is the, uh, the number one now for, uh, in terms of timing in spending space. So she, she spent about 15 days before and then before this mission, and then plus this mission. So there is a, a biggest record of timing, uh, spending, accumulated time spent in space. So uh, for females to, spay, uh, to stay in, in outer space, uh, the challenge is more or less the same or even a little bit more, uh, and you need to have uh, more uh, endurance to space environment. And also, you have to tailor-made the spacesuit for EVAs, uh, for smaller figures, and for, for ladies, it's more challenging in all aspects uh, in comparison with men. So uh, I think in the future missions, we would also have a good combination of, of men and, and women. But at this stage, there is, uh, where the focus is in the construction of the Chinese space station, including the two uh, Wentian and Mengtian fuselage that's due to be integrated into the, the Tiangong station that will form a T-shaped uh, space station with a total of 92 metric tons and in outer orbit. Fair to say that Wang Yaping has made us all so very proud today, uh, as long, uh, along with two other astronauts for sure. Now, finally, the Shenzhou 13 mission has set a new national record, as we said. It is China's longest manned mission, staying in space for six months. Uh, what, is it, what is its sig significance overall? Well, I think uh, it's unprecedented. So far, there's, uh, uh, we have the last mission was, uh, the longest one was three months. So with this six month uh, extended to stay in outer space, uh, there is a, a careful study. Uh, the, there's a, uh, some uh, particular changes to the, uh, uh, to the physical uh, condition of the astronauts. Uh, uh, we know that once you're in outer space, you don't have to use a lot of strength and you, your bone mass would lose. So all of this can be studied uh, uh, once they're back to Earth and uh, uh, after the debriefing and during the whole recovery process. And there's an, also a nervous system and also cardiovascular system. So all the circulation system is also uh, changed and also the balance of people uh, with, you, with your uh, inner ears and inner shows, that, that all of these uh, small changes needs to be carefully studied. So we had extended uh, period of stay in outer space. That's uh, one step for uh, the uh, permanent station of the manned uh, station in, 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 uh, in the Chinese space station. And also that's a, also a preparation phase for future more ambitious programs such as uh, uh, lunar programs or even Mars missions uh, where sending a man to Mars would need uh, even a uh, longer period of time to stay in outer space. So all of this is, uh, is part of this mission studies and this, the result of this experiment 
is also valuable for future missions preparation. Alrighty, good luck with all the future endeavors. Uh, Mr. Xu Yansung, Director General at the Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization in Beijing, thank you so much for joining us at this hour.